We're in Sudbury, Ontario to find out about these mysterious little particles called neutrinos. Right behind us here is Science North and this is where our journey begins. Let's go. Hey, Julie. Hi. Hello, Julie. Here's your lab coat. Thank you. Excellent. I'm a scientist. So I, I get nothing. I'm not, a, well, not scientist material. Well, if you want, I, I have a neutrino outfit. A neutrino outfit? What do you mean, a neutrino outfit? A Captain Neutrino, neutrino. outfit. Captain Neutrino. So, Julie, tell us a little bit about me. Okay, so neutrinos are tiny, tiny particles that are created inside all stars. It's sort of a, a byproduct of the fusion that happens. They're small. Tiny. Can we see them? No. No. Are they fast? Yes, very fast. How they fast? travel at the speed of light. And are we just bathing in neutrinos right now? Absolutely. If you hold up your finger for three seconds, uh -huh. one, two, three, about three trillion of them just went through your finger. Really? And where are those ones now? Gone. Gone. They just keep going. Most of them will just go through the Earth completely unimpeded. Neutrinos are the uh, smallest known uh, particle in the universe. And if we can learn all about neutrinos and what they do, It'll basically yeah. unlock the key to uh, the origin of the universe, as well as where the universe is going to go as an expand. So it's very important for scientific knowledge. What do we have here? Yeah, what is this big crazy thing? This is the model of the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. Uh, this observatory is at the bottom of Creighton Mine, two kilometers underground. How do we get there? Going down the mine. Where is the mine? About 20 minutes from here. To the observatory! <laughs> Why Sudbury for this site? Uh, one of the things we need for our experiment is a, a big, deep underground site. And so this turned out to be the best site in North America for an experiment like this. So the Creighton Mine is a very unique place in Canada and in the world. It's an actual working mine as well as this science lab way down in the earth. We have to go deep underground to see neutrinos because on the surface we have cosmic rays and if we were to set up our detector on the surface, we would find it would be overwhelmed with these cosmic ray particles. We're going into the neutrino zone and we need special outfits because otherwise we're going to contaminate it with our, with our, filth. our filthy bodies. So. No lab. It's go time. Going underground. Miners are here. Wait for the cage. The elevator ride was like shaking back and forth, just plummeting through a void. And the miners are all kind of, you know, kind of skulking silently in the corner. And then uh, we're kind of huddled in with the PhD guys. There's not a lot of chatter going on there, but uh, we tried to bridge the two. And do you guys hang out much with the lab people that go down to the neutrino area? Are you guys like going to drink afterward in the bars and that sort of thing? Well, we tried. We yeah. tried. You tried? They didn't want to come drinking with us. Watch your step getting off. Doug, where are we? Well, we're 6,800 feet, a little over two kilometers underground. It's about a kilometer and a half to the lab. The uh, rock temperature down at this depth is 41 degrees Celsius, and it's kept cooler by the uh, air that's flowed through these passageways. So we're about to come into a clean room lab here, and our first step is pretty obvious. We're gonna clean our boots. The interesting thing about the snow lab is because you're kind of going from the dirtiest possible environment into the cleanest possible environment. Well, welcome to the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. A lot cooler in here, and yeah. we'll be a lot cleaner in a little bit here. Yeah. Is somebody going to bathe me or what? So how much do we have to wash here? Like, full scrub down? Oh, well, we want to get everything clean so that we don't bring any of the mine dust into the lab. It's quite a refreshing neutrino shower.
Well, next we uh, are entering the cleaner part of the lab and we have to take an air shower. So hold air your hand shower. over that little button down there and that'll start the uh, airflow as soon are as it closes. Are you going to come in on this, Doug? Come on. No, two's the limit, unfortunately. So I'll join you after. <laughs> And this is the entry into the new world of neutrinos now. Well, we're on the deck that's suspended right above the detector at this point, and right under us is this big acrylic vessel that has right. our heavy water, and outside of that are the light sensors. So I'm a neutrino blasting through space, and I come in here, and what happens? I, I hit something underneath me in the heavy water. That's right. A very small number of neutrinos will actually interact in the tank. Most go straight through, just like they go through the rest of the Earth. But about 15 times a day, we see a neutrino signal. And they just kept elevating the level of discussion. I kind of stayed here, and they just kept on going up there. And I was just like this. The neutrino hits a, hits a molecule in there in the heavy water. Right. And then there's like a reaction or something. Yeah, uh, we have three different reactions. Uh, and one of them breaks the uh, heavy hydrogen that's in heavy water into the core of that hydrogen into two parts, a proton and a neutron. And that neutron, as it moves through the water, releases a light signal, and we can uh, detect that. And, and then the sensors pick that up. That's and right. It comes up through these wires onto those chips. That's right. And I in fact, to operate uh, one of these machines. Can I operate a machine? Can I work here? <laughs> you could if you were trained. Excellent. Uh, some of us. Uh, Excellent. All right. What we got is a representation of the detector in a couple different views of the geodesic sphere here, where roughly 10,000 photomultiplier tubes are mounted. And that's so, what we were just standing on in the other room before. That's exactly right. But what happens when neutrinos, like, blast through that thing? <coughs> exactly. Neutrino, a neutrino interacts with the heavy water in the center of the detector and produces a cone of light. See what happens when we go like that. Bam! Oh, there you go. Cool. And your job is to just sit here all day looking at this? Uh, at least for eight hours. Eight hours? Eight hours. I mean, science, as I understand it, is by no means an athletic endeavor. We're going to get a neutrino soon, eh? I hope so. You find yourself just sitting here hoping, hoping, <laughs> come on, neutrino, come on, neutrino, come on, neutrino. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's like fishing or something. <laughs> you don't actually operate the machine, just observe the machine. But, you know, close enough. It's just uh, semantics, really. All right, if you want to adjust the scales, you can put your mouse here and click and slide things around. Excellent. Okay. Yep, that's just uh, a good way to look at data from different sections. So neutrinos essential particle helping us understand the universe. Overall, the SNOW Lab is a fascinating place. They've proven the existence of neutrinos, and they're expanding humankind's understanding of the universe. It was fascinating. Neutrinos, only found in Canada, eh? <laughs>